we will continue our quest learning about the signaling systems now first of all we are going to see what are the modes what modes are used by different systems to convey a signaling molecule or transport a signaling molecule from one cell to another one part of the body in atme to another and also just the basic principles of signaling so let's look at the modes first of all there's an endocrine signaling in which a particular cell produces or group of cells produce the signaling molecule or the ligand it is sent or it is shipped to the blood stream and it transports from one part of the body to another part and ultimately to the different cells or target cells which will read the signal and respond accordingly so this is endocrine signaling there is paracrine signaling in which a cell is secreting a ligand and a cell in the near vicinity not adjacent cell but somewhere in the near vicinity is going to receive the signal through diffusion so here's a cell which is secreting a ligand and here's a target cell which is in the close neighborhood it will receive the signal and respond autocrine signaling this is more predominant in for example immune system we will talk about this in more detail when we look at immune system here the cell is producing the signaling molecule or the ligand and it has that same cell has receptors on its surface that can bind that particular ligand so its cell is producing a signal and responding to itself it is responding to that signal signal by plasma membrane attached proteins so signaling molecules don't have to be mobile all the time signaling molecules can also be attached or present or embedded in the plasma membrane of a cell so when two cells interact one has a ligand or has a signaling molecule present on its plasma membrane and the other has a receptor on its plasma membrane or its cell surface when this interaction takes place the signaling information is transmitted to the adjacent or the target cell so there's another type of signaling i'll briefly mention synaptic signaling which is between nerve and the target cell generally a gland cell or a muscle cell this is a very low affinity these signaling molecules or ligands have very low affinity for their receptor so as soon they are released they attach to the uh, the receptor very soon after they are released and taken back up by the uh, the cell that was producing that signaling molecule or the ligand so here it is the synaptic signaling an axon which is re releasing a molecule in the space between the these two cells the target cell will receptors on the target cell will bind this ligand it will read the signal and act accordingly and then its function might change now i would like to mention that signaling molecules when they interact with receptor they can cause different changes in different cells it all depends upon what type of machinery is inside the cell that is going to read the signaling so for example when acetylcholine it is a signaling molecule produced by nerves when it binds its receptor on heart muscle cells it decreases the rate of or the force of contraction acetylcholine the signaling molecule and binding receptor on the surface of a heart cell when the same molecule acetylcholine molecule binds the same receptor which is present on the salivary cells salivary gland cells it will not cause the decreased rate of contraction or force of contraction it will cause the salivary gland cell to release or secrete certain proteins that it had stored now here we have the same molecule acetylcholine on skeletal muscles the receptor is different when this ligand binds acetylcholine binds its receptor on the muscle cells it will cause contraction we will see this more how this happens but for now the, i want to emphasize that the heart cell and the the salivary cell they have the same receptor which is interacting with the same ligand producing different results it is because of the other molecules other molecules present in the cell which were interacting with the cytoplasmic domain of the receptor they are different and they are causing a different effect so this is an important principle to know here 
I would like to mention that the generally the turnover rate for most signals is very short. Here, for example, there is an acetylcholine molecule being released by a nerve cell. It binds acetylcholine receptor on the endothelial cells which are present in the blood vessels. This endothelial cell will read the signal and it will activate an enzyme called nitric oxide synthase. It will take a molecule arginine and produce nitric oxide molecules. These nitric oxide molecules will in turn act as signaling molecules on the adjacent smooth muscle cells and they will bind another enzyme called nitric oxide, another enzyme called guanyl cyclase. This enzyme basically produces cyclic GMP and the cyclic GMP results in relaxation of the smooth muscles. So this is basically the main point here is nitric oxide has a half-life of five seconds. We will see other examples in which signaling system is turned off even quicker than that. So again initial signaling molecule is received by endothelial cells which generate another signaling molecule nitrous oxide which diffuses to adjacent cells this would be paracrine signaling and it enters this cell and it binds an enzyme guanyl cyclase causing it to produce cyclic GEMP which results in relaxation of the smooth muscles. Cyclic GMP is degraded by another enzyme and that is the enzyme which is target for a drug called sildenafil citrate more commonly known as Viagra which commits the cells to keep the cyclic GMP longer than it would normally without the presence of that drug. Next we are going to see in the next module that there are certain certain systems signaling systems which produce a response very slowly it, the, the response time is very long but their response even when the signaling molecule is removed from the system the the effect of the signaling molecule is still present after although it has lo been long gone so we'll, that is the next system we are going to look at